Hello there! My name is Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And today I'm making a small front-facing character portrait, so I thought I'd share some of the planning that goes into something like that. To get started, I've created a circle that's going to define most of the head. And now I'm adding about another 25% of overall height to find the position of the chin. After that, I join the chin to the sides of the circle to create the jaw and the overall head shape. And of course, if you use different angles or curves of jaw lines here, it'll give a different head shape to the design. The bottom line of the original circle that still remains there passes approximately between where the nose and the mouth are, so I place those features on opposite sides of that line. To find the position of the eyes, I measured the full height of the head, and then I draw a line at 50% of that height. So like right in the middle of the head. Uh, and this is going to define the top of the eyes. So I filled in some placeholder pupils for now, and then I add eyebrows above that. The ears are going to sit roughly from the top of the eyes down to the tip of the nose. So I block those out really rectangularly, and then add a bit of rounding to them for a better shape. As you can see, the proportions I've just discussed are also fairly stylized, uh, roughly following that of like an anime or a manga type character, where like, you know, the entire face is kind of in the lower half of the head. Um, but it's a style that I like, and it's something that I feel translates really well into a pixelated form. The nice thing about constructing portraits with pixel art is that because you're working on a grid system, you can basically start at whatever size you want and then use those relationships of the facial features to kind of calculate out what pixel placement you'll need for that starting size. For this one, I actually bumped a few things into place, and I shifted the whole face over to make it an odd width instead of an even width. Uh, meaning that I now have a single row of pixels down the exact center. I generally find it more useful if things can come to an exact point pixel, rather than a space of two pixels wide at the center, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Next, I begin to add some shading to create contour around the face. And I always tend to shade for clarity, so my imaginary light source here is pretty much just in front of the face and up a little bit. So there's going to be shadow along the sides of the head, and then some under the eyebrows as well. Uh, oh, and for the eyes, I tend to put the pupil highlights kind of off to the same side rather than being symmetrical. Uh, otherwise, it can make the character look cross-eyed. The color palette that I'm using is called 2-Bit Demichrome, and I found it on low spec, and it was made by the user Space Sandwich. <laughs> uh, as the name suggests, it's a 2-bit palette, meaning there are only four colors here. Uh, so it's like a Game Boy palette, uh, but what I like about this one are the two middle colors that they chose. Uh, one is a desaturated yellow, and the other is a desaturated blue. And they're essentially just inverted colors of each other. Uh, so in addition to a nice distribution of contrast across the entire palette itself, there's a strong color contrast here as well. There's something kind of mechanical and grimy about these colors as well. Uh, so based on that idea, I decided I wanted to make this character into kind of a muddy soldier or something like that, uh, with maybe kind of a slight sci-fi theme as well. I'm dropping in a rough dash line to size out a helmet over the head. And whether you're doing hairstyles or headwear on a character, it's important to consider that that kind of has a volume beyond the edges of the head. So I usually find it beneficial to plan this out either as line work or maybe as just a large silhouette over top of the head. Uh, and I normally just start from that bald character head since it kind of helps you visualize that volume and placement a lot easier. The other thing with like headgear or hairlines as well is that I try not to cover up too much of the character's eyes. Uh, obviously that can't be helped, you know, depending on what your design is, like that's part of their character. Uh, but if I can, I try to leave them uh, slightly clear so that it's still possible to see the expression from the eyes and the eyebrows. For the helmet shading, I'm using the tan color as the main tone and the blue as the shade tone, as opposed to the white and tan that I used on the face. And that way, hopefully it's easier to read as being a completely different component and you know, not just some weirdly shaped head or something like that where you can't really tell. And for a couple finishing touches here, I added some hair poking out of the bottom just to be able to give her some kind of hairstyle. And then I also freestyled some more details by adding a bit of decoration to the helmet, uh, just to have it be a little bit unique and to kind of give it a bit of sci-fi flavor. Okay, so let's go ahead and run a brief recap of this one, and then I'll come back after to wrap up. Here we go. Alright, you can see I've also added a hint of neck and shoulders in there as well, just to make it a complete picture. 
The final size for this, uh, including the black border there, is 38 by 38 pixels. And as a bonus, I've also made this tiny idle character sprite for her as well. Uh, one of the nice things about having a character portrait is that it can carry a lot of the character design for you when a character sprite is too small to have that level of detail. So I thought it'd just be a little nice addition to kind of finish off the character design. Anyway, that's about it for this one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed following along, and best of luck with your own portraits and character designs. So thank you for watching, and take care and keep it square.